The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the June 21st, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary weekend, and the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. That's right. You can dial it in. Phone lines are open, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. That's right. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in, in our Tigers. Done well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get started on this fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow 43 points, 26,796 is the print. S&P is flat. The NASDAQ is flat. The Russell's down 10 points, or nearly 7 tenths of a percent to the downside. Semi's off a little over half a percent, or 7 points. New York Stock Exchange down 2 tenths of a percent. Wilshire off about 1 tenth of a percent. Trenny's a slightly positive, up 8 points out there. Well, the NASDAQ Composite is off, is off 8. Uh, spot Volatility Index is totally flat out here. Gold's up 2 bucks. So Silver off 21 pennies and light sweet crude up 43 cents. Lead the charge, the upside booking holdings up 12 bucks. Humana up eight. Google up six to the downside off $10. Double IPR, Innovative Industrial something or other, off nearly 4%, 11 bucks. Innovative Industrial, oh, that was, uh, I just did that. Align Technology jumping up front here, down nearly 11 bucks or 4%. Beyond Meat off 10 bucks. The Trade Desk down 10. So, uh, you know, we want to take a look at what you want to look at. The first question that came in was from Michael H. So, Michael writes, hey, Steve. Hey, Michael. Regarding the XLE, on a weekly chart, well, first, let's do this. Let's say he wants to look at the XLE. So let's, uh, I'll finish answering the question, but let me just populate this chart here where we'll have daily, weekly, and monthly uh, data to uh, look at. Let's get rid of that A to B equals CD to the downside. So there's our clean chart. Let's finish reading. On a weekly chart, could today's candle end up being a bullish engulfing candle? and also a potential close above its weekly oscillator unchanged line. So let me put the XLE on my other charts as well. And you're specifically looking at a weekly time frame here for the energy sector. So, yes, the answer to your first question, could this week be a bullish engulfing candle? The answer is yes. Let's go ahead and uh, post this uh, or, or expand this chart out. So here's the weekly time frame chart. And uh, the, well, what you see out here, Michael, is there was an established downtrend. So we have this established downtrend on a weekly basis. You had an inside bar here on June 3rd. That meant nothing. Price, in essence, was moving sideways last week. And uh, this week, you have wrapped the body of last week's candle. That gives you a bullish engulfing candle. So now let me go on to question number two. If so, okay, so we've got the if so. And if I want to go long... Shall I wait for a pullback to the daily for an entry point and try to get in around 61 bucks? 
All right. So what we're looking for, that's a different question. And Michael's asking the question, is this a bottom? So if we look at the weekly chart out here, here's what we do know about the weekly chart. Number one, support is 59.77. It's a brand new profile, Michael, that formed this week. And resistance is 65.80. This is still in bearish configuration from a profile standpoint. What I mean by that, Michael, is if you take a look at where this profile formed, the bottom of this week's box is below the prior box. And the top of this week's box is below the prior box. So trending wise, this would say a counter trend rally inside the XLE may only take you up to 6580. You're at 6340. That will help you to do the risk reward analysis. With regard to the red line, I know you asked about that. Price right now is trading above that on the weekly basis, 6208. So that is short term bullish or intermediate term bullish out here. So we know that. But you you brought into and there is no bottom pattern that I see out here on a weekly time frame. So there's no bottom pattern other, one, other than potentially the retracement from the uh, lows out here back in uh, around uh, December 2018 uh, to the highs out here in April. Now let's go take a look at the daily time frame because you referenced the daily time frame. Let's go see is there any bottoming signal here that has recently occurred to encourage Michael to maybe step in that trade. <clears throat> There would be potentially, let's go see if there was a completed A to B equals CD to the downside. There really wasn't much of a retracement, you know, a 30% retracement. We'll go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt. You did get that completion of the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. You did get the bullish reversal signal. That's what that pattern needs. That took place on June 3rd. Now where are we in the wave count, as an example, from that low? So you're in wave number three. And um, resistance here, Michael, inside the XLE on a daily time frame is it's a Tommy DeMarc setup trend line. That's established by the nine count pattern. In this case here, it's the high from May 22nd, or I believe it's May 22nd. Sometimes this uh, this charting package is, is off by a day at the bottom when you're really looking at the correct day. But here I'm going to give you the price as soon as I can. You can see it stretched across my screen. It's 64.28. So the answer is no. I cannot recommend to you to take a long trade in the XLE. If it does pull back to 61.37, then your risk reward um, maybe comes to fruition out here. I see the resistance line being tagged more likely before you see Stevie's red line here um, tested. Um, what else is it that I can can share with you on the daily time frame chart? Well, let's get off the weekly chart out here. Here's the daily time frame chart. The bottom of its or the top of its box is at 6042, uh, well above where prices are uh, well below where price is trading right now. Uh, Michael, I've just got to go with the the um, with the response that the time to have, because you seems like you're pretty good, you're pretty up on these patterns that we're taking a look at. And so really your time, I would ask you the question, why didn't you buy the XLE since you were looking at it on June the 3rd when you had that bullish reversal signal and that A to B equals CD to the downside. Now that is a Gartley buy pattern, by the way. I uh, believe that it is. Yeah, it's a Gartley buy pattern uh, that had formed out here. And every Gartley pattern does have five potential outcomes. If we go explore those, Michael, let's take a look at what those would be. And those are going to be based upon the A to B equals CD pattern that we just looked at. I switched over to this chart just because the Fibonacci retracements are much easier to draw. So what this would tell you is outcome number one was achieved. That was 6261. Outcome number two, 6497. Let's pay attention to Stevie's or that Tommy DeMarc setup trend line out there. But no, the answer is no. Now is not the time to enter a long trade in XLE. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Phil. Phil writes in, hey, Steve. Hey, Phil. Uh, curious on your trend signals and TAS profiles on ticker symbol GTES. That's Gates International Corporation. Saw a big reversal here on volume and uh, taken some option as a, a pilot uh, position. Uh, and cheers. Cheers to you. So let's go take a look at Gates uh, Industrial out here. We've got the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. The monthly uh, chart, uh, we don't have enough data to generate profiles. Just hasn't been around long enough to generate those. Uh, what uh, what Phil is looking at, if you take a look at today's candle, uh, you've got a, a bullish reversal signal. You've got a key reversal signal. Now, this is after an extended uh, decline to the uh, downside, as you can see. So what this chart would communicate to Phil with the TAS market profiles being above where price is at is that old support, which really never acted as support, should be resistance, which would be 1155. So what this tells you, Phil, is that one price target is 11.55. If price can get inside 11.55, close above really, I'd say 11.66, then that suggests a run up to the 11.97 area. Now, depending on how this closes this week, you could end up with a weekly hammer candle. But that weekly hammer candle, just telling you the price is trying to hammer out a bottom, uh, but uh, there's no A to B equals. There's no pattern that I see here, at least on this chart. You see clearly the A to B equals CD. Well, I won't say clearly. My eyes say that it's much lower than where price is trading right now. Yeah. So that would take you down to about 951. We never got down there. So that pattern doesn't exist. And on the weekly, as we mentioned, I'm sorry, in the monthly, there is no set of profiles. Let's pull over the other daily time frame because uh, Phil is in this position. And what we need to share with Phil is that even though, oops, even though there's a bottoming pattern out there today, 
which is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom, with that uh, key reversal bull sash pattern, is that price is may run into the last time that this broke down. It began on June seventh, Phil, and that says that that price point of eleven fifty nine seems uh, like we talked about eleven fifty area when we looked at um, some of the profiles. Eleven fifty nine here is your significant re uh, uh, is your breakdown area. Price may just do a counter trend rally up to there. Now. What happens if price closes above that level? Well, a couple of things. A close above 11.59 would say that there is a change in trend that is underway. Now, that change in trend would then target the next area where this equity broke down. That takes you back on a daily time frame to around May 17th, and the high out there would be 13.14. So that's what my systems say at the moment. I like the trade. Just simply be aware of where PS day resistance is. Hey, let's go out to Philly and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve-O, I'm very good. Thanks for taking the call. Hey, my pleasure. So do we catch you on the East Coast or the Midwest uh, today? Yeah, no, uh, I cannot give you any uh, up-close and personal report about that refinery fire. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. happen to be nearby. Well, um, I'll say good for that. That way you're not sucking in a lot of bad fumes or something. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, let's talk, let's I talk wanted silver. To, uh, yeah. re I'm sorry. Uh, no, I wanted to revisit the topic we talked about three or four weeks ago. It was back on that week of uh, May 27th, right after Memorial Day, uh, discussing the prospects for so for a silver rally. And that was back when it was under 1435. And uh, thankfully, we, uh, we identified something. It has rallied. So I want to revisit that and ask uh, the direct question, can you see – the setup where this rally really grabs hold and extends much further and faster than it has already. That's the question. Um, and before I uh, uh, listen to you, I just wanted to share with you yep. uh, something that I find uh, intriguing, and it is a similarity between what has gone on here this week and three years ago in 2016. Uh, this week, of course, is the uh, the third week of June. Uh, three years ago, the third week of June was the week in which there was the uh, the vote in the United Kingdom for Brexit, uh, which went the way it did. And in response, uh, as that vote came in, the price of gold exploded higher, and silver followed, but kind of weakly so. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That was the third week. As I uh, mentioned, gold exploded then, just like gold has exploded this week, the third week of uh, June, three years hence. And silver has lagged. It's rallied, but it's lagged. Uh, silver lagged that rally phase that third week of June three years ago. The fourth week of June three years ago, Silver embarked upon what I'll call a catch-up rally, where it rallied dramatically uh, harder than gold. The percentage move that fourth week of June back then was extraordinary vis-a-vis -vis gold. And what I can share with you, I'm always watchful of the calendar on COMEX. Mm -hmm. Next week is two events for COMEX Silver. One options expiry for silver put and call options that is in fact tuesday and then first notice day for delivery of uh bull of physical bullion against comex contracts that is the end of next week and for whatever reason it is uh, a very typical pattern in which silver doesn't rally much going into those but if it's in a strong bull trend, the uh, lid to the teapot, if you will, can be taken off. Mm -hmm. So I can, uh, I'm wondering to myself and wondering just out loud, could next week, especially later in the week, be the uh, setup for an explosive rally extension in silver? That's what I'm asking. I wanted to ask your thoughts, please. 
So let's do this. Let's just uh, kind of take it by the numbers because the, I don't have a crystal ball, so to speak, and certainly anything can happen. But what we do have is we do have sets of numbers here to help us identify you know, what silver has done uh, that makes sense um, what uh, and, and what is it likely to do. And what I mean by that, folks, is let's just do this. John, let me pull over this weekly time frame chart. And it's the weekly time frame chart that's up on the screen right now with its horizontal trading ranges. Let me first explain that that shows that silver on a weekly basis has closed at the 1644 level uh, 55 different times during the time frame span uh, that is on my chart that takes us back into 2009 into October of 2009 so let me just pull this out uh, and the uh, and silver also the next largest uh, area of closes really would be uh, 1477 out here and that's where silver this week found a, a bottom now what silver is doing it's bouncing up to a midpoint so the midpoint in between those two levels the midpoint in between 1477 and 1644 takes us to 1561 this is a weekly chart we're looking at that's a an area where price can turn down and thus far it has I want to stick with the daily time frame. I'm sorry, the weekly time frame chart, and come over here and take a look at my other chart. I see we're going to break out here in about 20 seconds. But folks, here, just take a look at the patterns that you and I use to identify tops and bottoms. You've got your TD setup nine count. That was the week of February of 2019. Price then pulls back to where? The support level established by that nine count. That's what it did on May 31st. We get back from this break, we'll go tell you where resistance is using the same set of tools. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're on the line with John in Philly. We're taking a look at silver, and I specifically was on the weekly time frame. And on the weekly time frame chart, the tools that you and I use to help us identify tops and bottoms, uh, support and resistance, in addition to market profiles and so forth. But on this chart here, um, what we can see is that silver topped again back here in February of 2019. It does it with that Tommy DeMarc setup nine count, identifies the top perfectly, and then price pulls back to where silver had broken out. Um, that was the beginning of that nine count that took place on December the week of December 7th that looks like uh, 2018 out there and that low was 1434 and that's the price that uh, was tagged and held as support back at the end of May so what this would say to me John if you're going to ask me where is it likely that silver on a weekly basis trying to get up to it's going to be the resistance level just a support held down here uh, that we're looking at resistance may hold and that price point is 1596 if in fact you get a close above 1596 in silver then from the weekly standpoint you're going to get two things you're, you're likely to get an a to b equals cd to the upside which is going to run right into resistance at its secondary uh, TD setup resistance line right in the 1660 area out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at it. When I come over and I look at the daily time frame chart, here's the daily time frame chart for the current contract. If, in fact, silver today, by day's end, and I don't know that it's going to do this, I'm not saying it's going to do this, but if it did get down below 1512, that was yesterday's low, you'd have a key reversal session. That would be a bearish reversal signal after the completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, and that would say price would pull back. You don't have a bearish reversal candle right now, John. So we don't have to worry about that. But when I take a look at the profiles out here, there's nothing to really suggest. There's nothing bearish about the profiles. Prices above the daily, prices above the weekly. And um, this would say that silver may want to go up to the next level, which would be 1575. So going back to do the correlation as you were, uh, 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 and I see that you, you lost the phone line, so sorry about that. Uh, but uh, trying to go back to, so, so that's what I see when I take a look at silver and just staying present with the current patterns um, that are out here at the moment. And I hope that helps you out. Always good to speak with you. So have a, a great weekend. And uh, I'm sure we'll be looking at the silver over the uh, coming uh, days. Let me go to the next question that came in here. Uh, this one coming from, let me do this first, though. I mean, uh, I, my system kind of got corrupted a tad. And so I'm going to have to restart something, but that's okay. And and you're wanting me to, Nick, Nick, you're wanting me to go look at a 60-minute time frame chart for the Dow. I won't be able to do that until I get my system restarted. So I'm going to pass on your question uh, right now. And um, But your question is, can I take a look at the Dow? Uh, the daily and the 60-minute time frame. I know I like the 60-minute. I uh, know I don't like the 60. I don't mind the 60-minute chart when we look at the ES. When we look at the futures contract, Nick. So, but but with regard to looking at 60-minute in the Dow, cash indice. Personally, I think it's a waste of time because you don't have equal increments out there, and so I I, I shy away from that. So we won't do that. Um, there's another question that comes in here, and so I'm just trying to, this is really kind of like a strategic pause as best I can to see if I can get things fired up in the background out here um, and, and still be able to. But Hector writes in and he says, if the Dow closed today above 2616, uh, I think he missed a number out there. Is 30,000 the next stop uh, sooner rather than later? So... You're asking a great question. Here's what I would. Here's what. Here's how I would answer your question, uh, Hector. And specifically, you're taking a look at the Dow. Here's what we know about the Dow. It's still. Oops. It's still trading in a. Cons wow. What's going on here? It's still trading in a sideways consolidation. My target, if the Dow continues to move higher, is the trend line that I would take from the high. This is a monthly chart. Nick, you can do the same thing. Use the high from January 2018 and then the high from October of 2018, approximately 
we only have one more week left in the trading session. That would be about 27,235. It'd be slightly higher than that, maybe 27,265 for the month of July. Do I see us moving to 30,000 sooner than later before the consolidation tops out? My answer to you is no. I, I don't see that. Now, if price breaks above that little diagonal line out there, well, then, then maybe um, we're into something. And maybe the consolidation pattern is uh, being broken. But right now, I just don't see that. If we look at the other indices out here, you're really going to see the same things, Nick. Over on the right-hand side is the S&P 500. We can see that it's trading, um, in essence, above the highs from October of 2018. It, too, you can draw a diagonal line from the highs in January and then just simply use, I'm uh, just using, actually, September 2018's high out there. That would take you to about 30, 24 or so, uh, you know, inside the S&P 500. You can see the NDX 100 on the bottom left. You can see the Russell 2000 on the bottom right out here, well away from its all-time highs, but yet 1602 in the cash indice is a is a significant resistance level out here so i think what's really important to understand i won't post it just because i don't have it up nick is we are still in this unfavorable seasonal cycle inside the markets when i and, and what that says is that the the well let me let me just do this vision you know we're, we all look we all learn more easily most of us visually uh, and uh, so, so, so it does make sense for me to just take the time and put this, put this chart back out here because if you can see it, then at least you can follow along with my logic. You don't have to agree with my logic. You come up with a different way to um, interpret what it is that I'm looking at. But here's the seasonal cycle, and there is not anything. Did I say anything? I mean underline anything. There is not anything going on right now in the markets that isn't following along with the basic historical annual seasonal cycle that we see inside the Dow. Let's not get too hung up into, let's not get hung up into the dates that I have on my system because the cycles can shift, which I believe they've shifted by about three weeks out here, um, that it, you would expect an actual higher high to form historically inside the Dow going into that last seasonal cycle before the market starts moving down into October, the middle of October. Maybe it's going to be the third week in September this year. I don't want to get caught up into the dates out here. But when you look at this seasonal cycle, there's not a thing that is different with regard to the way that the market is behaving right now than what we have seen historically. So I'm going with the idea, and I think you should too, that we're still inside a consolidation. And that what we should be looking for is some type of topping pattern. Now, I don't have the charts up here that I can show you. Maybe by the end of the, uh, of the hour, I'll be able to post them. The earliest time frame right now, there's a, there's, a, there's a setup nine count pattern that may be underway in many of the cash indices, Nick. And what that would say, that would say the earliest time for a top inside the equity indices would be Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of next week. But the New York Stock Exchange right here, right now, is saying not so fast. and says we should be on guard, even today. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 45. S&P is uh, flat out here. And before we went to break, and uh, Ruby, I'll get to the U.S. dollar index in a moment. But as we were going off air, I said, uh, and, and my, my other charts haven't come back up yet, so I can't show those to you. I'd like to, but I but I physically can't do that. But I had mentioned that the New York Stock Exchange, at least as of 1.42 in the afternoon, is generating a signal that says a retracement, a retracement has begun. Is it a top? I don't know. It's it's certainly a retracement. What do I mean by that? You know, if we take a if we take a good look at the advanced decline oscillator, that's the center portion of my screen, um, and uh, that is, by the way, for those of you that are new to to that, an oscillator is nothing more than the difference between two things. In this case here, I'm using moving averages. I'm using rocket science to determine those moving averages, literally rocket science, and we're using the 19 and the 39 day exponential moving averages out there. When that oscillator line gets up to plus 150, it generates a really important message to you and I. First, when it gets above 150, you can see a couple instances when it did that here. It tells us about future prices, just future, doesn't necessarily mean tomorrow, that the highs that you're seeing at that stage are going to eventually get taken out. That's the message that takes place. You can see the other time uh, back here between January of 2019 when price just uh, when the oscillator stayed above that level. Of course, that has led to higher highs as we speak. The problem becomes when price turns down from that 150. And when it begins turning down from that 150, it's an inversion. It's a version of the overbought uh, reading out here, but it's a better version of the reading of what overbought means versus the relative strength indicator, which people misuse all the time. Uh, this one's pretty easy. It's numeric. 
You get up to plus 150, do you turn down or continue moving higher? You turn down, you've got a failure, what I like to call a failure pattern, says the price is going to continue to pull back. So New York Stock Exchange is already generating a signal for us saying that price is going to pull back. It just may be a normal retracement and pullback. How will we know otherwise? Well, the easiest way to know otherwise is to pay attention to the spot volatility index and its 50-day exponential moving average. I know you and I talk about this ad nauseum. Whatever that means. I hope I'm not making you sick to your stomach. But uh, with the spot volatility index below its 50 day line, which is 1570, we're trading at 1470. So nearly a buck. It's 1473 to be exact. A buck underneath it, that's pretty significant uh, price spread out there. Only if we see the spot volatility index close above the 50 day, will that signal to you and I that we've got a deeper retracement that would be going on, at least inside the New York Stock Exchange, which you can't trade. But you can get the general uh, condition of the markets, which is a beautiful thing. So that's uh, what I see, um, Hector, when I take a look. We don't have any new profiles out here, so this will help Jay, who I know was into. Oh, I take that back, Jayster. I take that back. Just within the last hour... The Russell 2000 has decided to get in on the game and generate a new market profile. Very interesting. And that profile out here, the top of the box is 1569. Bottom is 1527. Center, which we're below, is 1557. And uh, this is a bearish structured box out here, Jaster. Bearish structured box. So the New York Stock Exchange is signaling to you and I, at least as 146. I don't know what it's going to look like at 359 this afternoon. But assuming that it doesn't look any different than now, is signaling to you and I, expect at least a retracement. This may be a retracement to buy into the long position to still take price up above the highs that we have already seen, kind of those diagonal highs that Hector and I were taking a look at out here. So now, in a bearish structured profile, let me just expand this out. Let me make sure that I clearly articulate for folks what in the heck that means out here. Bearish structure doesn't mean bearish necessarily it's just directionally speaking with regard to where price is likely headed to and what we're going to do right now is we're just simply going to as soon as i can find it we're going to turn price off because if i turn price off out here it's much easier to see there you go if you take a look at this last quadrant out here on the right hand side let me just simply highlight it with a yellow rectangle here is the new box that is formed the new set of profiles that is formed inside of the russell 2000 notice how the center line is closer to the top than the bottom that means that sellers are the ones really in control of this price area, 1527 to 1569. Now, when you get below the center line, the center line is where both buyers and sellers have confidence that that is fair value at 1557. Let's turn price on. We're just slightly below right now. We're at 1555. Not good enough. But if you do, Jay, get below that by several more points out here, then odds favor at least moving down to test the bottom of that box, 1527. Now seeing this, I'm glad that subscribers and I uh, got out of the Russell 2000 long trade, in essence, at the highs of yesterday. Turns out, looks like that was a, a good move out here. No other profiles yet established uh, in the uh, ES Mini, the NQ, or the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract to be able to share with you. Uh, was the prior box bullish was the question inside the Russell 2000. It was, Tucker. And so if you take a look at, let's just expand this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn price off again. And so it's an excellent question. And thanks for paying attention and listening. Uh, listening to what I'm sharing with you. So if you take a look at this, is what Tucker's asking about. He's asking about this box. This was the prior box out here. And if we take a look at this prior box, what you'll notice is you'll notice that the center line was much closer to the bottom than the top. And so, yes, that was um, a bullish structured box. And so the same thing here, Tucker, when price gets above that center line, let's turn price back on what it does. And that took place really, it took place out here, you'd have to say, as soon as that box was formed, June 4th, June 5th. June uh, 6th, intraday was a test of that support. Um, you know, you really closed above it on June 7th, and price went up to test certainly the top of that box. That's why understanding the profiles, and are they, are they equally distributed? Center is basically in the center. Are, is the structure of that box bearish? 
Um, is it bullish? Now, here inside the Russell 2000, Tucker, if we take this just one step further, if price closes above 1569, call 1570, which is lower than yesterday's high. Yesterday's high would be the swing point, and that would be at 1576. What Stevie would say is any close above 1570, nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. This would be a failed bearish pattern. What I mean by that, bearish from the standpoint of trying to push price down to the bottom of the box. So then you would expect that price would continue to move higher. Does that help you out? Tuck, with regard to what it is that um, that uh, we were taking a uh, look at out there? I hope that does. Now let's go to Ruby's question. Ruby's question was asking about the U.S. dollar. John is posting in my uh, system that the euro is breaking out. And uh, so really both are kind of uh, uh, similar. Of course, here's the U.S. dollar index, by the way. Let's make sure that we understand what's going on long term. And what you can see out here just want to make sure it's real clear. Sorry, I didn't mean to spit out water. Um, hopefully, they didn't catch that on uh, Tiger TV. But nonetheless, you can see how the U.S. dollar index bottomed back here in 2011. You can see a couple different trend lines out here. Of course, what it hasn't done, U.S. dollar, hasn't really broken out to the upside. Look at that long-term descending trend line going back to 1986 out here. But that's not what that's not what the question was for Ruby. Let's go back in the two-minute wrap and take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Give her a price target as to where it's headed to. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. So this would be kind of interesting. I get a push text message to me that Roy Orbison and Buddy Holly are back. Now, if they're back, folks, I, I, you know, I, I'm going to see them. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime hologram show. So it's beamed down from, from heaven, I would think, out there. But what two great, uh, what two great artists to uh, be great to certainly uh, see them. Anyway, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. We only have about a minute and a half out here. Here's what we know, Ruby. Uh, we know that price closed below the bottom of the daily profile. That's at 96.19. Profile-wise, um, if we take a look at the weekly profile, the next level is 95.68. So be careful here. Price is down at support. I know during the break we were talking about the euro, but the euro, although it represents about 55% of the U.S. dollar index, you know, here we're taking a look at the conglomeration of the euro, the yen, the pound, the loony, the uh, Swiss franc, and the Swedish krona out here. But there's an A to B equal CD to the downside. Uh, if price closes below 95.68, not much for Further below, but around 95.44. That's your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Um, and, uh, and, if, and if you don't see a bullish reversal signal and price does get down to that level, then price would move down to 94.94. You wait for the bullish reversal signal to let you know that the A to B equals CD pattern, or in this case here, a Gartley buy pattern, would be uh, complete. Here's the other 30-minute, uh, 120, five-hour time frame chart. All red shoots, so we're not seeing any kinds of signals of a bottom even on an intraday basis out here. So, Ruby, I know you're short the U.S. dollar index, and best of luck with that trade. So, folks, at this stage here, just to sum it up, we're getting signals that the market is getting ready to pull back. This may just be your garden variety retracement dip, so to speak, that one would want to buy. We'll have more, a better idea, more better, more better. We'll have a more better idea. I know, send me back to grammar school out there. Next Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I would say. But in between that time frame, stay tuned. The world's best polar bear. I mean, the smartest polar bear in the world. He's up next, David White. After that, Tom O'Brien will all be back with you on Monday. Have a great weekend, folks.